the water arc gun, uh, which uh, I've got several versions of this. You can see various versions mm -hmm. that I have built through. These the were years. pictured in uh, yes. ESJ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, electric spacecraft turn mm -hmm. tonight. And uh, this particular gun, I'm going to put one cc of water in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we know one cc of water. Whoops, I'm not sure it's precisely one cc. Okay, one cc. We'll put in one cc of water exactly. And I'm going to launch this water out of the gun at uh, probably I'll use 256 joules of energy, which is fairly low energy actually, considering Peter Grinot's original experiment used uh, 5,000 joules. And I've measured the water's velocity using a laser beam and everything, and the water will be coming out here at supersonic velocity. More than 300 meters per second. Yes, about 340 meters a second, roughly, at this energy, particular energy level. And you'll even hear the sonic boom. Uh, it's created by the shock wave front of the air being pushed out of the muzzle, just like a regular rifle. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to charge this up, and uh, let me plug in the... Uh, Video cameras are fairly well shielded. Uh, the normal tube, tube type would have a problem with it. This is a CCD element inside. The, the tube type... tube type wouldn't have any trouble as long as it's on batteries. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing. It's got to be on batteries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm going to plug this in now for charging. And I've got the gun cocked and ready to go. Charge it to 16,000 volts. Oops, I didn't turn on the uh, filament power for the uh, rectifiers. Uh, let's see, I'm going to start to charge it now. It's charging up. It's 12,000 volts. The capacitor is now charged at 16,000 volts. I'm going to go over here, turn off the power, still holding the charge, and preparing the fire now. And now that, we'll see how much water got expelled from the gunpowder scale. Water has been administered? Yes. Water has been put in. One cc of water. And, uh, let me get in there. Yeah, why well, don't I do that charging. too? Okay, I'm charging the gun up. And this time I'll fire at about close to 18 kilovolts. Okay, here we go. Ready, set, fire. say that the water, as a matter of fact, at lower energy than that, this is what happens. That was at 256 joules, that's quarter inch thick uh, birch plywood. You can see it cuts a, cuts a hole right through it. So you can see that, uh, the, uh, that that's just water. There's no chemicals, there's no explosion or anything, and uh, it drove the, the aluminum right up through the, uh, through this. See, it just went right straight through it. Okay, 
day, and what I'll do is I'll place the ball in the gun, and I let it fall into the gun just far enough to set itself, seat itself on the water, and no deeper. There you go. And if a little bit seeps by the ball, I make sure it evacuated it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, because you don't want any water above the ball because water being incompressible and medium, it would actually, you know, slow the ball down. Gun is hot. We're going to be firing. Man, I didn't want to go that high. Okay, I'm going to wait for it to die down just a little. What's that now? Okay, it's about 18,000 volts firing. I saw the ball go, I think it's a fragment go. Yeah. There. There's the ball. There's the actual ball itself. It's still intact. Um, I'm going to fire it one more time. Let me discharge. Charging up again. Okay, power is off. Prepare to fire. Now. And that time it shattered. That time the ball shattered. And it penetrated a good deal that time. It kicked up the wood right around here. This piece right here. Right. Still didn't penetrate though, but did shatter. And yes? Okay, we're out here. My wife just got home. Okay. The, uh,